Assalamu alaikum and good morning my dear friends. Hope my voice is clear. We'll be waiting for uh, a minute uh, for some of the attendees to join. I think a lot of attendees are joining in now. We'll give a minute time before we start. No, 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 I'm here. So, so All right, uh, let's start. Uh, as this has been recorded and we'll be posting this in the YouTube, appreciate if all our participants, uh, excluding the host, uh, to mute themselves. I think by default it's muted, but if anybody has a permission, please mute themselves. Um, the purpose of this webinar is to assist uh, and help off-road enthusiasts for being better equipped with highest quality of product and knowledge. On an average, I think uh, nowadays the presentation might uh, go up to 30 minutes or one hour. First part will be the introduction of 4x4 Gulf. And then I'll hand over uh, to Titan Performance for the introduction. We'll have question answer session in the end. We'll be having a raffle throw uh, at the end of the webinar. So please stay tuned until end of the session. You may type your uh, questions in the chat box. Um, my dear friends, I'm very excited uh, today. Uh, and it's our honor to introduce a well-known off-roader with over 25 years of experience uh, driving in deserts of UAE. Also a multiple winner of dark skies challenges, that two for three years in a row. Who is also a managing partner of a Titan Performance, uh, who strongly believes that there should be no compromise when off-roading. Uh, please welcome the one and only Shibu Bai. Shibu Bai. Hi guys. Uh, hi. hi guys. And we have another off-roader who also won Dark Skies multiple times. He's the garage manager and off-road overland specialist. Please welcome Saeed, uh, who venture into the unknown. These are the key points of contact. Saeed. Hello. Welcome, Saeed. Yeah. Um, before I start the presentation, as usual, let me uh, show, share with you a presentation. I hope all of you can see the presentation. Uh, Anjia, can you confirm? Because I, will, I won't be able to see the panelist. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, okay, let's start. Four into four Gulf introduction. So. These are the key uh, point of contacts uh, we have today, Mr. Shibu and Mr. Said. Now, let me ask you a question uh, to all the attendees. What is the thing that is everywhere, but you cannot see? Yeah, it is everywhere. It is there at your house. It is there at your, uh, what you call uh, it, your vehicle. It is everywhere, but you cannot see. What is it? Can anybody, anybody tell me uh, the thing, the invisible thing that is everywhere? Let me see who answers. I'm giving a few uh, minutes uh, for people to answer. Okay. We have few chats, oxygen, space. Dominic says air. <laughs> Jitu says, spirit, uh, God, ghost, nothing. No, that's not the answer. Air, no. Anybody else, we are giving you uh, a time to answer it. Happiness, uh, no. Uh, happiness, passion, time, sand, it goes on. Okay, okay, let me, uh, let me give you the answer. The thing that is invisible and it is everywhere, it is called as risk. Risk is everywhere risk of uh, you know uh, getting your building damaged vehicle damaged uh, so what i want to introduce you is 
how to cover up your risk of insurance of losing uh, your vehicle you know when while off roading you need to have an off road cover so i would like to introduce to mr rahul nair who's our insurance consultant uh, you can find his email id and the mobile number please keep in touch with him yeah for any insurance requirements for your vehicle for 4x4 four, four four vehicle okay uh my name is samir ali i'm the co-founder of 4x4 gulf uh, i've been offloading since a long time and this is uh, my passion and we have a lot a network of people who supporting us and our partners are jameen george zaid zoeb rahul naju maman matthews and we also have our supporting staff who's chako sandu pradeep dinesh ahmed salman saj and shimoli uh, i'll repeat the presentation because i want people to know uh, what exactly we do uh, so what we do uh, four by four gulf we wish to provide you a platform uh, that is uh, for off roaders and overlanders with the following but providing a pl platform where all off roaders meet together uh, in fact uh, what we are doing now is uh, we encourage a lot of people to do off roading and we will be responsible in future to increase the number of off roaders as it will help the off roading community so we go out to a lot of people uh, tell them about off road experience and then invite them to do off roading uh, thereby we help the uh, clubs all the clubs as well as the garages uh, to have uh, a lot of members uh, into off roading we also be providing a platform by the way our license is in the process uh, of getting it so that's why uh, the, the website is not yet ready i uh, will be soon hosting the website once we have uh, all our legal formalities completed it is on the process so we'll be providing a platform for all uh, off roads to meet together getting the right advices for any upgrades getting the uh, right suppliers um, product reviews a review on the best garages that's why we have a uh, titan performance here they were reviewed by uh, many people as one of the best garage uh, in 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 ua itself and we also need to warn about uh, certain wrong decisions that people make it's a platform for off road enthusiasts to come together to buy and sell uh, their product even set up and plan uh, drives together if you're stuck uh, anywhere like uh, any anywhere in the desert uh, in the whatsapp group you can seek for help and then someone should be able to help you uh, we engage in discussion uh, with suppliers like titan performance uh, to get you the right product and services with the best price in market as i mentioned uh, this will be our future uh, we wish to be your one stop shop for all off roading requirement um, we are setting up website Uh, only focused on 4 by 4 vehicles uh, you can uh, repeating the same thing buy and sell on on top of that we also will be providing you insurance off road insurance coverages uh, we'll also be providing you rent a car services let's say if you want to send your car to uh, titan for maintenance uh, we'll be sending you a rent a car for certain period of time uh, by the time your car is fixed and the car will be coming to titan performance for example um we also will be providing you recovery services if you are having a problem in the desert um we are uh, now available on uh, our um, website is still going on um and we have a youtube channel which you want us uh, to have a look at the channel and uh, see what we do there i have done my uh, first off roading uh, kit uh, the skid plates and the kill switch uh, from titan performance and i'm very happy with the way they have done it um people used to call me Ti samir titan when i used to be a newbie because the flag uh, that i used to have used to be the titan flag so that's how they used to identify me i, I was in uh, initially i started with uh, uh, desert nation uh, with uh, who, who was headed by uh, mr arif bai Uh, so he used to call me semi titan in the same way i used to be called as uh, the same name even in adventure tribe club so uh, now uh, before i hand over uh, let me show you uh, a short clip a video clip uh 
before I hand over the stage. <laughs> Wow, that was a wonderful presentation. Um, so I, I wish to hand over uh, the stage uh, to uh, Shibubai and Said, who's on, on the other end, uh, to uh, give us a quick uh, company profile and uh, to do the uh, next session. Said and Shibubai, you're there. Hi, everyone. I will quickly tell you guys about uh, Tech Performance. Basically, the company was started in 2017 with a notion of performance. When we went with that notion, it was we were, Shibu and, and uh, his partner, Sir Noble George, thought what would be the perfect caption for the company? We wanted to deliver on quality without compromise. So we thought, since we're a performance guard, let's go with performance without compromise. That has been deeply installed in myself, the other staff members, and we continue to grow as a team. We want to continuously bring the highest of quality standards to the market, whether it's the UAE and the GCC. We are currently the dealer, authorized dealers for products such as Radical Technology USA, uh, Vision X Lighting Systems, Baja Designs. We are also now the official dealers for KMT HD and Fuel Wheels, uh, Black Granola as well. And now we've also acquired the, the sound deadening and heat insulation products that's also called as STP, which basically keeps the noise and heat down in your cars. We currently are the number one go-to garage for suspension and uh, fabrication. Because all our clients believe that we do not compromise on the quality and finishing for our, for our customers. We make sure that safety is kept with utmost respect for all our customers. We make sure and we think ahead that before we do any job, we put your needs and requirements into the, into the so For example, when we're building suspensions, we just don't put the suspension. We, we make it a point to open them up, tune them for your specifications, knowing what you're going to do, whether it's overlanding, whether it's hitting the dunes, whether it's your daily drive for our end's goal is to satisfy your needs as, as, as a customer. So that is our company profile. I'd like to hand, all, hand it over for you guys for all the questions and answers. So please feel free to ask us and myself or Shibu will answer them for you. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so what, let's wait for the questions then, Samir. Yes, not a problem. Yeah, we'll, we'll jump into the question and answer session. We have uh, someone who has raised their hand, but before that, let me check uh, the questions in the panel. Hold on, let me just open the panel. So guys, it's a ch chance for you to ask any questions to, to the Titan Performance team, uh, and you can get your answers. So don't shy away from asking questions, yeah? Uh, so let's us get all the questions ready. Let me open the panel so you can apologize for this. Uh, before that, let me start. Uh, Anjia, can you shoot the first poll? Let's let's have the first poll and see. Uh, can you shoot the first poll, please? Okay, let, let's start with the first poll. Do modifications uh, to suspension or tires void the warranty? Uh, 
uh, I don't know yes or no. Let's see what people will uh, uh, react. We'll give you a minute time. Few more seconds to go. Okay, that's it. Uh, so do modification to suspension warranty. 45% people said, I don't know. Okay, so 25% uh, said uh, yes. And uh, I mean, 25 said no, and 30% said yes. Uh, so could you answer on this uh, confusing question uh, that so many people are asking? Do modification to suspension, white warranty. Please go Hi. ahead, Shibu White. Yeah. Hey guys, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so regarding the suspension and the tires, see, it is two to two and a half inch lift kit on a vehicle. It is advisable, which will not have any kind of warranty issues. And uh, if you look at the tires, tires you can go up to certain stages of uh, sizes, which is advisable. Uh, if you go over size, it'll affect the suspension component. So that will not be uh, appreciated. So the warranty will not be uh, valid for certain sizes of tires. Okay. For example, now I can talk about the uh, FJ Cruiser. Okay. The maximum size of the tire you can go to 285, 70, or 70. Okay. If you go more than that, it will affect the drive line complaints. It can damage your power steering systems and your differentials, and it can reduce the power of the vehicle too. So, so this is the maximum size which is allowed. Okay. And it will help you to on and off road and it will reduce the fuel cons consumption also. If you go more than that, it will have the many components. So as a warranty is concerned, you have to stick on the certain specification by the company. Okay, you can do a marginal difference on vehicles. Okay, so suspension, as I mentioned to you, uh, two to two and a half inch lift kit is acceptable. And uh, certain stages of uh, uh, sizes of tires which are acceptable by the, um, the agencies and the uh, um, governments too. Okay, so an um, example like you know previously we are not at all allowed to do any kind of modification to the vehicle, especially suspensions and tires. Okay, but nowadays it's not a scenario. The company itself is understand that when you're off-roading, you need a little bit of clearance on it. So, as a SUV cars as four by four cars, it is mandatory to have minimum two to two and a half inch uh, suspension systems to have a better uh, control over the vehicle and to have a uh, ground clearance. And it is it is acceptable. I don't think there is a warranty claim on it and the, and the warranty being awarded. I mean, see, there is a, um, a vehicle which is a FJ Cruiser as well as Jeep Ryan Cruiser. These are the most common vehicle for off-roading purposes. Both the vehicles, the companies are awarding warranties with a two inch lift and a certain uh, uh, sizes of tires. I hope it is understood. Yes, uh, that's that's a nice answer. Uh, there is another question coming from uh, Kiko. Uh, any of the Baja design lights has RGB uh, backlight that you provide? See, we have uh, we have two different companies uh, uh, lights available, which is Vision X, which is made in America, and the Baja lights. We do have the Baja lights available and the Vishnex available. Both have uh, uh, RGB facilities are there. Perfect. Um, um, he asks, uh, repeats again, uh, how much percent, percent does Titan uh, has a Jeep uh, JL specific items? Maybe uh, quick samples. So he, he's just asking, I think, uh, like you do Jeeps and uh, how much how many jeeps does you do so you just want to feel confidence that you're also working with uh, jeeps 
Actually, actually, Titan as a as a as a modification garage, we are not only limited to Jeep. As you understand, he asked a question. You see, we are doing all kind of vehicle. Okay, so Jeep is one of the vehicle. So we are not, as you say, there are garages specialized for one particular vehicle. No, we are specialized for all the off-road vehicles. So we are multi multi skilled, multi performance garage. That's good to know because uh, people used to ask me who are professional for Jeeps, who are professional for FJs. You know, they have this in their mind that they, for Jeeps, it's a different agency. For a particular vehicle, it's a different agency. But good to know that Titan takes care of all the vehicles. Yes, um, we, do, we do all kinds of vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Mama Chen uh, asked a question. Hi, can you advise if you can do a kill switch for uh, for ABS and airbags for Ford Raptor? Uh, can it be hidden so that it can uh, avoid warranty issues? Do you add, uh, do additional transmission cooler for avoiding overheating in the desert? Does it affect warranty? Now, this is a very, very common question asked by so many people that if they put a kill switch, uh, it voids warranty. But is there any way that they can have the kill switch in, in, in a way that it can be removed and uh, they don't have a warranty issue? That is that is the main uh, point of the question. And the second yeah. thing is for his Raptor, he just w need to have uh, the same thing. And, and, and the, the, the other thing is when you put a kill switch, does it deactivate the airbags uh, as well with the kill switch or it has anything to connect it with the uh, airbags. So that's the thing that they are asking. Okay. Oh. Uh, regarding the Ford Raptor, okay, you can have a kill switch for traction and stability and ABS. You can have a kill switch. Okay. That can be, uh, that can be made in a, in a way that company cannot be understandable, but, or we can give a portable type then when they wanted to go for a servicing, he can just remove, unplug the cables. So they don't understand where these cables are going, where it's connected to. Okay. That is regarding concern about the warranty is concerned. Okay. As a functionality is concerned, uh, traction, stability and airbag, uh, ABS, you can have one kill switch. Okay. Whereas airbag in a Ford is concerned, it is a bit difficult because the company has a safety measures. Okay. As we are not then not looking after the Middle East market, it is an international market, especially in the US. Okay, they can't hundred percent disable the airbag systems. Okay. See what is happening, it is a multiple, multiple functions given to a uh, given to the airbag system. So if you disable the airbag system, there are many other functions will not be activate so uh, it is not possible to 100 percent disable the airbag system okay at the same time the vehicle has an off-road mode that it is working on 80 to 90 percentage of uh, airbag uh, deactivations okay so this is we tried our level bus to deactivate airbag systems we tried in ford f-150 as well as the ford raptor but it is not possible because it is linked to multiple functions so if you deactivate one function, there are multiple functions will not be activated. So it is not advisable and not possible to do an airbag kill switch for Ford Raptor. Okay, that's a, a other question I want to ask myself on this is that uh, I've seen uh, FJ Cruisers and uh, Nissan um, Pathfinders, uh, they have their uh, airbags coming out uh, during off-roading when they hit bumps or something like that. Is there any suggestions that you, you can say that uh, we can take some precautive measures uh, for that not to happen? Yes, see, uh, as I mentioned to you, apart from Ford F-150s and Raptors, for any Toyota vehicles, any Nissan vehicles, we can have uh, two kill switch, one, one exclusive for uh, airbag, one for the traction and the ABS, possible. And we are doing, including the Lexus vehicles, so, uh, we are done to the L uh, LS570 and the GS460. We are done the airbag kill switch as well as the um, traction, uh, traction kill switch. One example, I have a forerunner. I also have the similar issues. So I disable the airbag as well as the traction. Possible. Now, Perfect. going to the, yeah. uh, where you were the, the person that asked for the, the AB, for the airbag to be disconnected on the, on the Raptor. That's what Shibu says. There's, there's many reasons why it's not disconnected, especially when you drive it in off-road mode for the Raptors. 
it is better for you to drive it in that mode than to disengage the airbag. Because a lot of people who have themselves, especially just for their airbags in the Raptor, it blows off. The reason why it blows off in the Raptors or in any truck, there is a, a leveling ball which acts, so, which acts as, as the mechanism for the airbags. So whenever you're crossing or whatever, at any angle, the airbags can deploy. That is why we tell the drivers who are driving trucks to first stabilize their vehicles. You understand that's me when I say that they need to stabilize okay. their vehicles in the sense to avoid the issue of the airbags deploying. The reason why the airbags mostly deploy is because the ball senses that the car has gone or has reached a certain angle. It's just a safety precaution. Now, when we're going towards the oil coolers and transmission and heating issues, we deal. We are. We currently install for all our vehicles the Truco brand. The reason why we're installing the Truco brand is tried and tested. We have tested it on many vehicles, including American and Japanese vehicles, so from Jeeps all the way down, all the way up to the to the Raptors. We use one brand, and we have solved that issue of the heating of the cars today. And even that, it does not avoid the warranty. We've also noticed a huge difference in the coolant in the uh, in the oil cooler temperature. On previous readings of one car before the installation of the of the of the oil cooler, it sat at about 82 degrees. After installation of the oil cooler, it dropped down to 60 degrees. So that's a huge difference in cooling for the cars. And it also gives better better shifting in the sand. Because you see what happens in the desert when you're pushing the vehicles hard. Eventually, after two three hours, you notice that your gears are, are slipping, or sometimes they're 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 upshifting to keep it cool. With a with a bigger with the brand that we use currently, all our customers have noticed a huge difference in performance, cooling, and and their transmissions are not overheating anymore. So I hope I answered the question for the whole period. Yeah, thank you uh, for that. Um, I have another question from Shimoli Shinoi. She has gone the whole world uh, searching for a Jiminy's. Uh, suspension uh, in especially i mean the whole ua uh, this is the resort type that she is looking for and uh, she says uh, which one uh, would you uh, recommend and do you guys have a resort type of suspension for jimny 2020 okay regarding this uh, suzuki jimny as as we mentioned earlier we are the official distributor of rad flow suspension from usa and uh, we have a suspension for Suzuki Jimny. By uh, next next week, we are getting our shipment, and uh, it's a 2.0 uh, with the compression adjuster, shock absorber, specially made for Suzuki Jimny. So we can provide the good suspension with the proper tuning for our country. Perfect. She, well. Yeah, she has another question. Uh, um, the same uh, thing that we discussed: kill switch for. Uh, Suzuki Jimny and the uh, yeah that the same thing if if you have uh, the kill switch for Suzuki Jimny yeah uh, we can do the kill switch for the traction and ABS not a problem we can do that yeah, and she's worried about the warranty again so I told see, her we can hide it yeah okay as I mentioned to you like see um, these are things are mandatory some of the companies they themselves do it on the vehicles with the request of the customers some of the companies they don't do it because of the parent company uh, warranty claims, but it is mandatory for an off-roader to disable the traction. So we can have many options to hide the uh, switches and stuff. So it's, it's, I don't think there can be much issue with the warranty. Yeah. Uh, for Jeep uh, Rubicon, uh, is transmission temperature 110 degrees Celsius too much? Any solution you might have other than replacing or adding trans intercooler? See, as a as a, you're talking about the jail, am I right? Yeah, jail. Okay, the jail. Even if it is a Rubicon or a Sahara or a Sport, all vehicles have the overheating problems. Okay, 110. It is, it is not that great. Okay, see, as we tried uh, two vehicles adding a transmission oil cooler. Okay, which reduce the temperature from 110 to 102. Okay, that too took a long time to uh, get the temperature higher, but there is a lot of difference in temperature uh, drops. Okay, so this is a common um, uh, complaint that transmission temperature issues there on a Jeep Wrangler JL for a long term. If you, you push the car a lot, especially you are continuously climbing the dunes, 
there is this issue happening. So 108, up to 108, it is considered as a normal phenomena. If more than 108, it is it is uh, overheating. So adding a see, we are already discussed about this matter to the technical department of uh, trading enterprises. They haven't come up with any kind of solution, but they are working something to add extra cool oil cooler to solve these issues. But as as uh, strongly believe that oil cooler is mandatory for the jail. Perfect. Um, how often that is uh, Rahul Nair? How often do you recommend a weekly off-roader to have their vehicle checked up by a professional? And how much do you guys charge for? A, I think the charges we can speak later. Uh, but uh, that is what he wants to know. If you want to disclose a charge, it is up to you. We are open. Hey. Uh, but you, you want to discuss about it, it's, it's fine. But uh, this, I think this is a good question because uh, they need a doctor to check up uh, their vehicle every time to make sure that the vehicle is running in a good condition. Uh, so what are the uh, hints and points that would recommend an off-roader to how frequently he has to come and check up his vehicle? Okay, see, regarding uh, inspection of a vehicle, see, let's imagine in a month, four times we off-road it okay and my personal opinion as a being an off-roader okay every vehicle has to be checked once in a month it's a must because see the way we use it in the desert we don't know what all things get damaged what all nut bolts are loose and all things lubrication all of them get dried out because of the sun blast and stuff okay one of the very important things i just wanted to bring up with the toyota vehicles the the drive, uh, drive shaft, okay, need to be properly lubricated, okay, once in a month at least, because this lubrication gets uh, dried out because of the usages, okay. So once in a month, if you can uh, do a periodical inspection, that will help your car for a long life. And see, sometimes what happens, I see in many customers, they don't even change, even clean the air filter, air filter after the drive. They'll wait till the 8,000, 10,000 kilometers to complete to do the service and the cleaning the air filters, which also I've seen it. So, and it can cause a lot of issues. I think all off-roaders know that, you know, see, as we, as soon as we enter to the desert, within half an hour to one hour, the filters get blocked. So once the filter gets blocked, the power issues are coming on the vehicles and you continue keeping for 10,000 kilometers, uh, so it, it can damage your engine and what is happening here the sand goes to the little uh, sand particle goes to the oil and mixed with the oil and the life of your engine will get uh, will affected so i personally uh, uh, suggest at least once in a month everybody has to inspect their vehicle as as the titan is concerned we are charging uh, 100 dirhams for the inspection charges plus we'll be doing the lubrication system as part of that inspection that's a good uh, charge and uh, it's very feasible. Um, one more question that I would like to link with it uh, when you said about the, um, uh, the, the air box to make it simple for our newbies. Um, so uh, there, there are open type and there are the, the, the closed type. Yeah. Uh, so we, we heard that in, in this uh, country, uh, you need to have the close type because it might get the heat of the engine as well. So the performance decreases. Um, assuming that uh, you might uh, need to fix a snorkel, which is connected to, uh, to the uh, air box. So what would you, uh, uh, I mean, I, I want you to break this, uh, whatever it is. I mean, what people think about it is that opened or closed first thing. Should you have an opened air box or should you have a closed air box? Uh, second thing, uh, aftermarket air box, is it good, better, or uh, the stock is better? Or should you upgrade, uh, for example, I'll give you, uh, uh, FJ Cruiser has a stock air box. Should we go with a Lexus stock air box, bigger size? Is this better or you can have aftermarket air box? Do you think aftermarket air box can gradually damage the engine? Like you said, if, if, uh, if there is a, dust coming in and uh, possibilities of all, all that if you could explain about this uh, uh, technology what we recommend and what will be better for people to do it okay see regarding the air intake systems okay it is open filter and the closed filter and closed filter with the uh, snorkel system okay okay see I'll, I'll come to the point of open filters okay 
as an open filter, you know very well it is it's, uh, it's completely exposed to heat and exposed to sand and dust particles. Okay. In our country, is full time is a there's a dust particles and sand always blasting around us. Okay, okay. so so see the thing is the main problem with the off roader is concerned with the open filter is like there is a ambient heat which is produced by the engine in the engine compartment. Okay. So actually, how does the function of the engine? The air needs to be sucked out and the, and the fuel and the mixture and the engine works like that. So when the when you get a hot air coming through the air intake system, so plus, you know, and if the ambient temperature is very high, it affects the efficiency of the engine, okay, which produces the horsepower. And uh, we are unnecessarily uh, pressing out the engines because of the aftermarket open filters. Okay. Second one, major complaints is like it can suck sand inside quickly, and it sand can block the filter quickly. So, as the off-roader is concerned, my personal opinion, it is not advisable to have an open filter. Okay. And see what when you say about the open filter, you know all the open filters are called free flow free flow filters. Even when you say free flow filters, you know the filter sucks air quickly. It means it can suck the sand inside the engine also. So there is a high risk of damaging the engine. Okay. And come to the uh, aftermarket air intake system with the box systems. Okay. Now. There are multiple companies offering uh, air index systems like Air Ed, AFP, All and XOS. Okay, now the thing is, you can choose the best company with having a better air purification. Okay, there are companies when they talk about is a free flow. You might have noticed it's very simple. A, a tip I can give it to you when you buying an air filter system and you want to replace the air filter. Just look into the sunlight or the slide. You can see there is a there are a lot of holes which is visible holes are there which is not advisable to buy the filters. So it can suck the sun immediately. Okay, there are filters having multiple layers on it. So try to get the multiple layer filters so that it will have the uh, purification better and it will give you cold air intake feeling. That means the air coming from outside and going to the engine cell. So the performance increases, okay? It's a certain 14 to uh, 12, 10 to 14 percentage of uh, power increases if you change the aftermarket air intake system. Now, come to the point of air intake, aftermarket air intake system with the snorkel, okay? So why we are all connecting snorkels in this country is not because we are going to the wadis or water to have a, a ride on the water. No, here basically we are trying to protect our engine by reducing the sand going to the filter. So when you have a snorkel, the snorkel will be placed on a higher uh, higher side. So the, the suction of sand will be restricted and it will protect the engine and the power will remain still still better when you are off-roading time. So this is the main purpose of adding a snorkel for us. And uh, I will advise you go with the um, aftermarket air index system having uh, multiple layers on it, nothing wrong in it. But I'm not in favor of open filters. Underlanders, you are not off-roading open filter system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so that's a good answer that uh, a lot of people had a lot of confusion. So it is uh, confirmed that if you have an open uh, air box system, that is not uh, what is good for uh, dune bashing. It might be good for uh, doing in an ice skating, you know, whatever, but not for uh, this region. Uh, connected to that, Rahul asked, uh, before that, I would like to ask Salman Jin the question. He's been there for a long time. I have a Dodge Ram, uh, 1500, that's the model, uh, 2017. I'm planning to install uh, Bellingston shocks, so I I don't need to change the coils. Uh, as per Bellis, uh, this this coils, they said no need uh, cause the shock fits the stock coils. Please advise. I'm not sure yeah, if I understood. Please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. As a uh, Dodge Ram 1500, the Bellingston shock absorber is available, and you can use your existing coil springs to fix on it. The good thing about that Bellingston coil shock absorber. Having a spacers on on the shock absorber so that you can you can select the slot from half inch to one inch on. Half inch is the height of the vehicle by 
uh, by the by the lock system okay so it is advisable you can go with the belt steel suspension it is a good option okay and uh, rahul connected with the last question he said what is the difference is uh, just understanding the thing so he said what's the difference between snorkel and a cold air intake what you recommend as a first step great uh, snorkel or cold air intake so should i go with the snorkel first or should i go with the cold air intake okay now see the one one important uh, issue over here now just imagine now you have a original air intake system in your vehicle and you are adding a snorkel on it okay so you you understand that the air sucks out the engine is sucked the air from the air filter system which is which is very very close to the uh, engine side of it okay now what happen when you put we fix a snorkel the snorkel has a longer uh, length of it so air passage through a small pipe and coming back to the engine it take time and the quantity of air coming to the engine also restricted it. okay so so what happened it better to add a free flow filter and having a multiple layers and aftermarket air intake system so the suction of air will be higher than the original one the original ones will have a lot of restrictions so that's why we always advise people change to to aftermarket one good quality with the snorkel so i advise go ahead with aftermarket one with the snorkel okay uh, anje can we have the next poll please anje if you are listening to me anje can can we have the next poll okay what are the basic uh, necessities to either dune bash or overland okay let's see uh, this was the first poll i guess uh, uh, yeah no okay so it, it is just to know if uh, people knows what what is the basic stuff uh, whoever is attending so this will be for dune bashing mainly and then overlanding i think 20 seconds more this is mainly a question asked by uh, most of the uh, people who are doing uh, offering for the first time what is the basic thing that i need to do <clears throat> okay uh, we can stop the poll um so 96% says skid plates recovery gears kill switch radio flag this is the basic thing 43 uh, some other other person says lifting with suspension springs tires and a few of them says i wish to know from you so can you uh, educate us on this shibu bhai okay now just imagine a person entering to off road okay off roading so first thing is he will be selecting a car okay or he may be visited to the to uh, to with his friends to a desert or maybe wadis or maybe what or maybe off roading and so and he like to enter to the off road community or off roading so he will first select the car okay Once after buying the car see not a single car in in the world coming with off road capability okay there are cars are coming with a certain modification but uh we need to do certain modification before entering to the uh desert purposes desert off roading okay so the first things he need to be having some kind of protection on the vehicle that he will may make uh, he will damage the vehicle by you know it's a learning process so there's a high chance of damaging many components of the vehicle so we always suggest people the first thing is to go ahead with a skid plate which will protect the radiator condenser and the engine because here see just imagine a person going to the desert first thing he will fall into a small ditch and knowing it because he is learning process so the first thing is to protect his bumper condenser and radiator which is a cooling system if that that get damaged 
it can damage to the engine also. So the first thing is we advise the person to change the skid plate. Then, see, as nowadays most of the cars comes with the traction, stability, airbag, all these kind of things which is suitable for uh, on-road purposes, which is not suitable. We don't need it for all off-road purposes. So we need a one kill switch to disable all the traction and stability. Then, then we need a one walkie-talkie. Basically, communication will be faster so that we can advise the person. You just imagine a person without having a walkie-talkie. He's like a child, doesn't know what he's doing. So he can do wrong, the wrong things. Even if we wanted to, you know, show some action, still don't understand. He may take it in a wrong direction. So walkie-talkie is very important for us to communicate, bring him to the normal, uh, normal way, or we can it, communicate to him to do things uh, correctly. Then we need to move to the flagpole, which is everybody knows that this is like when you go down to a dune and you get stuck down and the person behind don't see, he can also fall in the top of you, your car. And these are the indications of safety measures. Okay. So as a beginner, as a who, person who entered to the uh, first time to the desert, we will advise him to change the skid plates and kill switch for ABS traction and airbag and uh, walkie talkie and the flagpole. These are the uh, necessary things irrespective of what level or what he want to do it. But these are things that before he start off-roading, he needs to have these sort of things on his car. Okay. Now, come to the second stage of his. Now, we start driving to the desert. After fifth or tenth drive, then he will feel, oh, I need something to be upgraded. Okay. So, because this is not going to work out for me as I'm having issues, I'm getting stuck, I'm hitting the cars here and there. So he will be thinking, let's, let's put me a lift kit. So that the next option for a customer, he can go with the two to two and a half inch lift kit, so which will get him a clearance and he'll have a control over the vehicle and uh, the body roll will be reduced on the vehicle if we have a good suspension and give him some kind of confident level that it build up that, oh, See, otherwise what happened, a very small hit, he will try to apply the brake unnecessarily, even though you don't need to be applied, but still he'll try to make a mistake. So when you have a better suspension and a little bit of height on the vehicle, you will have a confident level, keep moving forward, and it will help him to improve his skills and come up to the next stage of it. Okay. Then when you come to the third stage, is a preference for the, for the uh, off-roaders. Okay. Now you move to the first stage. He learned things. He moved to the second stage. He learned many things. When he comes to the third day, he will know that what I would, I like to have in my car. That is a personal choice. He can have multiple things on his ass, like a beadlock rim, he can add on it. Okay. He can select which tire he wanted to be add on it. Then he can go to the uh, uh, performance side of it, like uh, engine upgrade, gearbox upgrade, differential upgrades, and all these things he can go with. These are the things which is uh, which is helpful for people. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so, um, so we have uh, uh, Shimoli Shinoi, the Suzuki uh, Jiminy. I think Shimoli is getting famous because she is very active in all the webinars. Uh, thank you for that, Shimoli. Um, so you have the uh, snorkel for Suzuki Jiminy. Do you guys have the snorkel? We ask, if you ask a stock, we don't have a stock, but we can arrange a snorkel for her, not a problem. It's available in the market. Perfect. So, Shimoli, if you are listening, uh, this is your one-stop hub for all your off-roading requirement. So, do uh, visit Titan Performance. Uh, uh, the, the, it is the same question repeated again. Salman, I think uh, uh, the answer is clear. Uh, do you recommend a snorkel for RAM? Of course, I believe... Uh, I don't know if that model has an issue. Uh, could you uh, enlighten yes. us? I will, I will add, uh, advise the RAM also have a nice uh, snorkel coming. It's AEV snorkel, which is available. You can use it. It's very good for the vehicle. Okay. Uh, Joseph uh, uh, Raphael uh, would like to know your suggestion regarding the to lift 2 to 2.5 inch uh, of a Pathfinder R51. See, at the path, see, the Pathfinder, see, there are, there are certain limitations on certain vehicles. Okay, example, Pathfinder and the Nissan Armada. This vehicle, the suspensions are very small in sizes. Okay, so there 
there's a limitation to increase the height more than one and a half inch. Okay, the thing is, if you go more than one and a half inch, you need to change the axles and you need to do certain modification to the vehicles. Okay, but if you ask me, it's not possible. It's possible to increase the suspension to two to two and a half inch. We can we can do it, but as as I see, there are certain things which you can do as a natural way of doing it. There are certain things you have to do the modification way to. Uh, to fix the suspension, it is possible to fix the suspension. Um, <laughs> that's a funny question. I want the Vision X Lite, please help me win. Sir mm -hmm. just, just wait. <laughs> Vision X Lite is not a problem. Right? <laughs> no, no, any, yeah, I mean, I mean, official yeah. distributor of Vision X Lite. We don't mind uh, as, as, a, as a who have participated on this particular today's event. We are ready to give 15% discount on all the members who joined on today's Tapna. Okay. So as, as I told you that uh, Samir will be having the full record. We also will have a full record. Whoever want to have a lights of Vision X, we can give you 15% discount. Please guys avail this discount. This is one of the best lights in the world and uh, it is made in America. And you get uh, 10 years warranty also. Uh, yeah, so that was the next question. Is it made in uh, Spain or USA? So it's it's made, it's in, made USA. in USA. Yeah. Uh, so that's a great opportunity, guys. Uh, I have already shared all your list. Uh, so whoever uh, is in that list will get a special offer. In fact, we had about uh, 70 people registered for this webinar, which is one of the biggest that we have ever seen. Um, Zoeb Khan asked, what general car maintenance to be done uh, after every off-road drive or dune bashing? What is the general uh, maintenance that we need to do? See, uh, okay, uh, I had to do clarify, uh, I need to give some kind of guidance to my off-road uh, friends. See, after every drive, okay, you, you have to clean the air filter system. That is a must, okay? So, and see now, just imagine Friday morning or afternoon, you went for the desert driving, then you will be, you'll be at home. And the next day morning, before you start the car, please check the water level and the oil level. It's very important because see, there are new cars, the oil, uh, oil level also comes down because we do crazy driving in the desert. So it is not the mistake of the vehicle or the burning, let's say there's a problem with the engine, but it is a common phenomenon. Like, we are, you know, seeing that I said, we are pushing to the max, that we are hitting always the 6,000 RPM. So there is a slight uh, burning of oil. It's, that's a normal thing. But I advise everyone, the next day of the, uh, after the drive, the early morning, when, before starting the vehicle, please check the water level and the engine, engine oil level. Because what happened? You don't know there is oil, water leakage or oil is consumption is more. You don't understand. You may say, oh, this is, I just did the oil two weeks before only. How come this happened? No. See, as I told you, we are off-roaders. The usages are extreme usages. So in order to protect your vehicle, you should also have some kind of time to be spent on your vehicle. So you need to make sure that every time you need to clean the air filter system, which is a mandatory, it is a must. You need to clean the filter. See, and some vehicle, you might have noticed, there's a vibration uh, on the same day or the next day morning when you start the car, because why the filter is get blocked. So it's like a suffocation for the engine. So the air is not going in the performance of it. So you need to, first thing has to be done to clean the air intake system. The second one, you need to check the water level, the coolant system, okay? Then the third one, you need to check the, the engine oil uh, level. These three things is a mandatory. If you can check this one periodically, and this will protect your car for a long time. Another important thing I want to give you on when you are while driving, okay, suppose you want for a uh, desert off-roading. Now, after half an hour or 45 minutes, you'll have a 10, five minutes to two minutes break, you'll be getting it. I will advise everybody, please open up, open the bonnet and have a look. Everything is intact on the, on the engine compartment. Because, see, now what is happening? We are fixing aftermarket air intake system, okay? You may be cleaning the air filter yourself, okay? May you forget to tie it properly and the hoses comes out, then the sand can go to the engine. So it's a precaution when you stop the car for a break or a first uh, break, open the bonnet and see, oh, everything is fine. To make sure to protect your car from any kind of further damages. So these are the things normally I observe. See, when I go to the off-roading, I physically, I check myself 
every break, oh, everything is intact, okay? So because the way we drive in the desert, you know, so we don't know, we are jumping, hitting all this. So there's a high moments of engine happening, engine movements happening on the vehicle so that these all things can be moved from, uh, so we need to make sure everything is intact to protect your vehicle, that's all. Okay, so someone is looking for a serious upgrade, uh, uh, Mithun Maman. He, he asked, hey Shibu, what is your suggestion in upgrading to a V8 F-150 single cab from an FJ Cruiser? Looking for your comments on maintenance and accessory cost. See, uh, as Ford F-150 single, single cab, uh, if it's a two-door vehicle, it is is a really good car. Having a 5.0 engine is good torque and horsepower. And uh, you need to do uh, two things, uh, two, three things if you do, it is better. Uh, first thing is you need to do a skid, uh, skid plate on it and you need to have a kill switch on it. Then, then you need a nice suspension, very important because this car in the front is having more weight, in the rear doesn't have much weight. So if you select a very good suspension and having a uh, proper wheels and tires then this car is one of the best car you'll enjoy and oil cooler is a must oil cooler is a must so i will suggest add a oil cooler before you enter to the desert because i've seen this all american trucks there's a transmission issue coming because of the temperature problem so oil cooler on ford fn50 and gmc's uh, these are mandatory this if you do all these things your car is one of the best part yeah um Jito Thomas asks, uh, are differential drop kits important? Why is it coming uh, bundled with only uh, toy tech suspension? See, now, um, why you, first of all, why you want to know, why you wanted to install the uh, transfer, uh, the differential drop kit? Now, just imagine what, what is the purpose of uh, uh, differential drop kit is basically when you increase more than the specific, uh, specified uh, height of the vehicle. Once you increase the height of the vehicle more than what is meant to be, then what happens, your uh, front axle, the axle stretch to the max, then the axle has a limitation. So when the car, when the wheels travel downward, the axle now is stretching downward too much, there's a high chance of breaking the axle, okay. So in order to avoid the easiest way of doing uh, uh, to make the axle straight, we need to bring the differential down. So when you bring the differential down, we need to add a spacer to bring the differential down to level the axles, not to get damaged. Other than that, now see it is not mandatory. See, it's a it's a garage. It's a good garage who is installing the suspension understand that whether it is required to have a trip, uh, differential drop or not. If it doesn't require, see, just imagine our kit is coming with a differential drop kit. Now just imagine, now a company is fixing a differential, you are bypassing, adding a spacer and uh, making down unnecessarily, which is not required. Okay, now, it is required, definitely we need to do otherwise, why we need to uh, having angle variations of the suspension. Okay, so, so I see, as a toy tech is concerned, they are giving as an option, okay? Some people, what happened, they want to increase the height of the vehicle more, which is not uh, which is not meant, but people wanted to increase it. Okay, in that particular scenario, so when the heart, uh, height of the car goes up, the axle variations come in. So when you have to balance the axle variation, you need to have a differential prop kit, which is to uh, uh, level the uh, axles. So it is not mandatory until and unless it need to be, okay? So it is not a mandatory stuff. This is all depend upon the technician and the garage, whether they will check the vehicle, whether it is required, need to be added, otherwise not. Perfect, uh, we have more questions. Uh, is it recommended to have wiring holes, for example, uh, Kiko on the skid plates, uh, or it doesn't do anything? So uh, wiring holes for, uh, it was not clear, Kiko. Shibubai, did you understand the question? No, the question is not clear. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. Uh, what is the service package offered by Titan? See, as a service package is basically on a service is concerned for a six-cylinder vehicle, we are charging 350 to 450 for a 10K oil. Okay, depend upon uh, the company. Okay, we have we are using uh, three different companies. One is a Castrol oil. 
the second one is mobile one and third one motel oil okay so all these oils are fully synthetic oil and and uh, it is a 10k oil and uh, for the mutual and mutual oil we are charging 450 dirhams and for the castrol and mobile one 350 dirham for a v6 engine uh, for a v8 engine it is 450 to 600 dirhams depend upon the oil and this consisting of multiple inspections and uh, uh, greasing and lubrication all of them as a as you, as you guys know that our garage is off road garage so we have certain areas to be closely monitored. So all the technicians will be checking the entire stuff of the vehicles and it to be corrected, we will be doing the correction. Yeah, uh, Shimoli, does the Jiminy need skid plates for uh, for the engine? She said engineer, I think this engine, typo error. Uh, and gear uh, or only the radiator as structure is similar to Jeep. So she's asking if what type of uh, uh, skid plates extended skid plates you know to cover up all the, the gear and all the stuff or uh, to have a s small skid plates see actually for a so sticky chimney there are three different uh, skid plates are coming which is for the front area which is a condenser radiator then comes to the engine side of it then that uh, the last one the transfer case side of it so that's a depend upon the customer to customer depend what is the uh, usage on it if it is a rock rolling and wadi drive, we will suggest to add all three of them. If it's only for off-roading and the sand dune bashing, it's only front is enough. Yeah, uh, B. John uh, Johnston uh, ask a question. Uh, transmission coolers, how important it is for off-roaders? Um, if you can make a quick, I think. Uh, okay, I think See, transmission oil cooler is... is uh, why it is important because see just imagine now we all are off-roaders we go to the desert we deflate the tire pressure to the 10 to 15 psas and we, we use the tectonic gear one two three four depend upon the terrain okay now what is happening over here see with the engine we are giving more pressure to the gearbox because we are quite often shifting the gear from one two three continuously so there is a high chance of oil getting heated up internal uh, gearbox internally and the gearbox is very sensitive for the uh, components on a vehicle is concerned okay so there are multiple components involved on to manufacture a gearbox so when the oil see and the main blood of this transmission is the oil and once you heat once the oil heated up then the viscosity goes it can damage your gearbox quickly so See, as a Toyota vehicle, if you, know, if you look at it now, one simple example I can give you, a person first time coming to the desert, he's driving the car on a D, okay, instead of a Kryptonic. Let him drive for 10 minutes, immediately the light will be, the, the, the hot, uh, hot, hot oil lights immediately pop into that dashboard. Why? Because it is shifting continuously left, uh, one, two, three, like that. So, this, the oil gets heated up, then the power of the gearbox loses, then the engine and power out, everything will be affecting it. Plus, and it can damage your uh, gearbox quickly. So I strongly recommend all the off-road vehicles should have a transmission oil cooler. Even if you look at American vehicle, it has been affected the transmission as well as the transfer case. So, but when the transfer, uh, transmission oil cooler uh, is installed, there's a lot of changes happening to the vehicle uh, performance too. So I'm strongly recommending all the off-road guys, please go ahead with the uh, uh, transmission oil cooler. You will 100% benefit out. Yeah, uh, in between, uh, there are people who have raised their, their hands. Uh, I'll go to these people. Uh, they've been raising their hands for a long time. But there is an ID which is called as the Lenovo SST. I won't be permitting uh, IDs which are unknown. Sorry for this, uh, because it's purely will uh, permit only people who has the names. Uh, so I have Arif Bhai, who's a, a good friend of mine. He runs a club uh, called as uh, Desert Nation. Um, we'll, uh, we'll be uh, allowing him to talk if he has questions and if you would like to introduce the club. I think uh, Desert Nation is a very uh, nice uh, club uh, for the, um, for, uh, it's a family oriented uh, drive. Uh, so let me allow Arif Pai to come here. Hello. Yes, Arif Pai, can you hear me? Hi. Good afternoon, gentlemen and lady or lady. What's up, guys? Welcome. Hi, welcome, Arif Pai. Yes, I. 
There's just going to be my voice there, right? Yeah, yes. Not, yes. Yeah, that's yes, all right. Hear. No problem. Okay. Uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity to come on uh, air with you guys uh, on this webinar. You guys are doing a great service to the off-roading community. I, uh, I follow your WhatsApp uh, page. A lot of questions are thrown out there to uh, you guys. And then you've got a big list of experts, including uh, people like uh, Mr. Shibu from Titan. And then there's uh, Saad from Radical and uh, there's Samir Deepak from Bahwan. Uh, it's, it's a great uh, platform. I think you guys are doing a great service to everybody. So uh, questions, I really don't have a lot of questions at the moment. Uh, but uh, the one thing is uh, the JK, you know, before the Pentastar. Okay, I'm just saying this, I'll ask you this question so that if someone else is listening, um, they can find. I know the answers, but I'd like the experts to uh, give a better uh, answer to the one that I have. So these 2008 uh, Wranglers from a, before, before Pentastar, the JKs, they always have a heating issue, okay? And they also have uh, transmission issues, okay? Uh, and there's not a lot of power being transferred to the axles. The engine is bigger than the Pentastar, okay? But it is uh, married to a very weak or a weaker transmission. <laughs> so what can be done to a pre-Pentastar JK to enhance its performance in the desert. So you've got so many people out there buying these cheap ones because the price range is between 25 to 35,000. That's a very attractive price. And you've got so many people buying these cars, showing up in the desert, and then having a concern is, why isn't my JK doing the same as the other JK? And then we try and explain to them the difference in the engine, and then we have to get them to do the modifications. So gentlemen, your stage. Okay, I hope the question is clear. Shibu, bye. Yes. Um, see, in Jeep Wrangler JK launched in 2007. Okay, and the, the 2007 till 2011, the engine is 3.8 engine. Okay, that particular engine has, doesn't have much of power on it. Okay, and um, the gearbox having issues because actually it was a manufacturing. Uh, uh, issue which the company was not taking care of the transmission well and uh, within six months time the company recalled all the vehicles in the uh, the Middle East and they added a transmission oil cooler okay so many people lost their transmission because of there's no oil cooler on the transmission so and the company recall in UAE and globally recall and they added a transmission oil cooler after that that uh, this issue was sorted out okay regarding uh, uh, the temperature water temperature uh, that there will be some mechanical issues on it otherwise the car is okay because this particular vehicle have a, a electrical fan as well as clutch fan so when the mm -hmm. temperature reaches reach a certain uh, certain le uh, level the manual uh, fan also will be activated then the temperature issues will be sorted out okay now the question is how we can improve the performance of this vehicle. Yes. Okay. I can give certain suggestion to you, like I've seen many cars coming here and uh, without having a transmission oil cooler and they have issue with the uh, temperature problem. So the first solution in a vehicle doesn't have a transmission oil cooler. It's a must to have a transmission oil cooler that oil cooler should be a very big size oil cooler also. Okay. The second one is like, mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, upgrade on the differential side of it. Now the differential is coming 3.73. You can go to 410 or 456, depend upon what tire you are running on it. Okay. Then there is a program, which is a bully dog. I tried many vehicles with the bully dog systems, which enhance the, uh, power of the engine as well as you can have some kind of RPM uh, increasing can be done on the bully dog and it the shifting of um, Shibubai sorry there's a break um, there's a break in voice can you repeat that again we can install the bully dog system on a 3.8 engine it will enhance the power of 
power as well as it enhances the RPM of the vehicle and the shifting of the gears will be delayed and you can select the shifting of RPM, you know, it can be selected on the bully dock and you can change the ring and pinion sizes to, to get the more power on it and plus air intake system. These are the only things you can do it apart from that, nothing. But there are people using uh, this vehicle. Now I understand that there are plenty of vehicles in the market with the cheaper prices. But at the same time, I request everyone, the unlimited one, please don't buy because whatever you do on modification is not going to help it out. So a person who is buying two door, it is possible. And you can do this kind of modification. Then I think this is the best solution I can give you to by, I will repeat once again, adding an air intake system and enhancing the differential ratios and adding an oil cooler for transmission and adding a bully dog pro, a plug and play unit. And that's all. That's the only thing I can help on this vehicle because uh, there's high limitation on this vehicle to be modified to get what you expected. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, if you can just give me one minute. Yeah. Yes. So there's four uh, salient points here. So this is for the record. I can see there's a record light up on the right hand side of the screen. This is going to be viewed by so many people. It'll be a great help. Um, how much would all of this cost, like a budget figure? Because most of these vehicles are U.S. imports at the moment. The ones that were purchased within the UAE with the Gulf specs had the vehicles recalled, and some of them actually have the, uh, the cooler that you're talking about. But the some others, the ones that are imported, don't have it. So just a budget uh, price. So if we keep it in the back of our mind, and we know that Titan Performance is one of the largest X Y Z. If you are okay to give that figure out, sure. Uh, I if this this I think we will we will discuss after this uh, event because uh, I need to work out <coughs> the right things. Uh, what all things to be needed to the vehicle? We can I can just uh, estimate you. And we will help them to give a better ratings to, to you know, anyway, there's already bought the vehicle. Uh, they can't yes. spend a lot of money on the vehicle. I understand that the scenario I faced also with the many customers coming here after buying. And unfortunately, they are, uh, they are all into the, you know, in the wrong, has the wrong side of it. So it's our moral yes. responsibility to help and, them. And, also. and to their surprise, to yes. their surprise when we tell them, bro, it looks the same, but it isn't the same. And uh, first of all, you mentioned me, it's American spec. There are a lot of challenges because in American spec, there are a lot of issues coming on this vehicle, even though the Pentastar itself is having a lot of issues with American spec vehicles. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. we will work with you. Okay, once this, uh, this our uh, uh, meeting is done, then I will be preparing an estimation. Then we will discuss in person. Okay, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Mr. Shibu. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Samir. Uh, this is RF uh, going on mute from designation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, that was nice. Uh, if anybody wants to have a voice chat, it is open now. Uh, you can come to the voice chat, guys. I see a lot of people have been joining in. Uh, a lot of people has been joining in. Uh, so it's a great opportunity to ask question to uh, the uh, Titan uh, team. Yeah. So the other thing is, uh, we have a few more questions left. That's it. Uh, I'm not. Uh, 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 Mahmoud, do you recommend uh, to upgrade uh, Fox suspension, which is originally in Raptor? I think he has it. Do we get a special price on kill switch, additional transmission code, etc.? Uh, so do you think uh, Fox is the stage one is okay, or do you think uh, that it's better to go with something, uh, some better suspension? Uh, Okay, regarding the Fox suspension on a Raptor, I don't know whether it's a generation one or generation two. Okay, if it is a generation, okay, uh, uh, let's consider both of them, generation one or one generation two. Both the uh, vehicles comes with the Fox suspension on it, but I will I will advise to uh, upgrade the suspension, uh, 3.0 suspension. You can go ahead with the Icon suspension or King suspension. These two suspensions are very good because we have sold plenty of to the Raptor community and they are extremely happy with the vehicles. And adding a transmission oil cooler is the best option. See, whereas what happened in the new models comes with the EcoBoost engine, okay? So there, if you change the intercooler systems and stuff, it will be benefit for you. And there is a MPT tuner and many options are there. You can, we can help you out. And uh, if you can contact us directly, then we can work out for you. Thank you very much. 
yeah i i can um, the the guy uh, repeats the question he he meant in skid plates can i make circles to for cooling the air you know so is it recommended to make circles in the you know lower part of the uh, skid okay. plates okay now uh, regarding skid plate i think so many many people are making skid plate in the market so see we are specialized making skid plate depend upon vehicle specifications and the way the vehicles are been used on the desert and what all the area need to be taken care getting the cooler air inside if you look at the vehicle how the designs of the vehicle always the heats are dispersed on the lower side of the vehicle okay that means the skid plate area is very important on any vehicle because all the heat from the top coming down and dispersing through the floor okay this is how the systems are built so what we do always we we will give you we will always make sure that there is enough ventilation to the vehicle, uh, to the skid plates having a dimple die punching so that the skid plate also will be made stronger so it will not get bent easily okay so all this is depend upon vehicle to vehicle we have a specific designs which will not be affecting the temperature problem which will help to disperse the heat automatically thank you very much yeah um i can see sp filter in the background do you have a gel rubicon hood scoop for a gel rubicon uh, is it risky to have in the desert uh, is it uh, possible to do custom route uh, from scope to factory air box yes we can do that uh, see as our kind of usage is always better to have a hood scoop that so there are two ways of hood scoop one is uh, pushing air from outside to the inside and the heat will go down by pushing the outer uh, outside air there is another one that the inside a heat air has to go out so there are in and out so depend upon uh, vehicle to vehicle we can make a hood scoop and we can do the ventilation system it is always advisable to have a ventilation system to cool down the engine compartment especially when you talk about jeep wrangler the engine compartment is so congested so it is very difficult the heat to disperse so to have a ventilation is very useful okay the jitu thomas asks uh, shibu quick, quick quick question what do uh, what oil do you recommend for fj ow30 5w30 5w40 ow40 see uh, see depend upon the see when you talk about oil see now the now we are on a peak summer in a peak summer i recommend the toyota vehicles go with the 5w40 okay uh, those who are off roading now it is a normal normal uh, uh, on road purposes 5w30 is recommended please advise don't go to 5w20 i'm having customers changing 5w20 which is not at all acceptable not at all good for the toyota vehicle so please stick on to 5w30 or during summer 5w40 is recommended yeah what is the difference between tuning a shock absorber and rebuilding a shock absorber okay there are two things uh, shock up what you talk of when we talk about uh, shock rebuild when you say rebuild means see uh, see uh, after one and a half years or two years the the shock oil in the oil inside the shock will get damaged because of the usage in the desert so when so it is called rebuild rebuild means we open the shock absorber uh, internal components and we we uh, change all the seals and shims and uh, we will be changing the hydraulic oil and uh, cleaning clean cleaning and servicing and fixing that is called uh, rebuild now when you call talk about retuning retuning means is a personal choices now example now you fix the suspension 6 months back and now you added a bumper and winch on the vehicle then your suspension functionality will not be that great as what you have earlier so there we need to work work uh, work to retune the suspension to to understand the vehicle capacity and weight of the vehicle to tune the suspension as per the specification of the vehicle that is called re, uh, tuning okay so this is depend upon many many uh, many kind of parameters some people they wanted to use very aggressive on the road on the desert then we need to do a uh, special valving system for the customers so that is basically known as tuning okay so when you say rebuild means opening the shock absorber change the oils and change all the seals and 
and became a new suspension after doing this servicing. This is basically a service. It's called Rebel. Perfect. So all the questions are over. One question from my end to educate the audience. Uh, using, um, uh, we know that you are dealers for certain uh, wheels, uh, rims that you are selling. You have the beat lock rims. Uh, first thing is, uh, could you tell us more about the uh, rims that you're using, the agency that you're providing for certain rims? Uh, second is using a lightweight rims for off-roading. Do you recommend the lightweight rims or do you uh, wait, uh, look for a heavy rim which is good for off-roading, uh, especially FJ and Jeep? Uh Okay, see, uh, we are the of official distributor of uh, four major brands. One is uh, Fuel Rims, and uh, KMC, and XD, and Black Rhino. These are the four different company rims we are dealing with. It. And why we select these rims? Basically, they are one of the oldest company in US manufacturing, and been participating many rallies and this one of the best company and having uh, thousands of design on it okay and quality is concerned this you know this products doesn't uh, uh, they don't compromise on qualities and as i said we have multiple beadlock rims which is already tested and proven and we'll be getting a warranty of two to three years warranty also given by the rims none of the wheels are being given other companies are given warranty but these wheels are given warranty for the product okay and regarding the weight of the wheels this is compared to the other particular uh, competitors the wheels are lighter and and see this see another question here now when you talk about uh, uh, weight when weight is concerned like what what is your requirement okay now I see now the current trend in the market, people are asking, I need 30, 38 inch minus offset, I need 44 inch minus offset. Okay, see there are certain sizes of wheels are not suitable for your vehicle. So please, I advise you first, uh, come to the specialist and ask, uh, what are your requirements? This are, and talk to them and get proper information before you conclude or buy a, buy a rim. So we can help you out to get you the best suitable rim for your vehicle. And as I mentioned to you, uh, Fuel, XT, uh, KMC, and Black Rhino wheels. So we have too much of options on it. So you can select which one you like it. Perfect. So we are done with all our uh, question and answer session. There is no more, uh, I think, we have. Everything is answered. Uh, Shibubai, thank you very much uh, for uh, spending some time with us. Uh, we are uh, greatly honored to have you guys here. So uh, now let's go to the interesting, uh, interesting stuff, guys. I think uh, we have got a few people, few people left, and few people. Uh, do. But before that, uh, yeah, let's let's uh, let's do a poll um, to rate this webinar. After that, we'll have the interesting pricing session which will be done by uh, Shibubai and team. Few more minutes to go. Uh, I think this presentation went beyond uh, an hour, uh, which was really great. Um, a lot of information was shared and a lot of people could uh, get a lot of help out of this. Uh, this will be shared in YouTube for uh, guys to watch this offline. And uh, it will be helpful for a lot of people to uh, join in. So uh, how do you rate this webinar? Most excellent. We got the higher standard. Uh, then we also have very good and we also have a uh, good uh, not bad. We don't have not to my expectation need a lot of improvement. I'm very happy to I'm very happy to have this uh, poll and we are very happy that uh, people are liking what we are doing and uh, they're uh, there uh, I mean it's it's good educative uh, purpose uh, which is actually helping them to uh, have the right uh, products right suppliers uh, who does the um, uh, you know uh, take care of a vehicle in the right way um, so let me hand over for the pricing uh, session uh, to Shibubai and uh, a team uh, so guys yeah it's your call now let's see who who are the lucky winners uh, so, for the uh, raffle draw yeah yeah we went to the raffle draw once we received all the names last week of all the participants yeah 
So we're going to start off with the flags. So okay. courtesy of uh, Wolf of Road, we're giving away two flags. The first person is Akif al who gets the flag. Can you, can you repeat the name again? Akif al -Taf. Akif al -Taf. Akif al -Taf. can you raise your hands, please? You have won something. Akif al -Taf, if you're hearing us. Akif, if you're hearing us. Yeah, allowed to talk. Okay, hold on. Uh, let me allow him to talk. Uh, hold on. I'll mute. Akif, can you hear us? Or you can type, I mean, if you're hearing us. Okay, I think he is there. So we can, uh, so congrats, Akif. Uh, you are the first winner. Um, you have his email ID. Uh, so you guys would be uh, able to email him. He's there in the panel. I think he's not able to understand how to raise the hands, I think. Uh, uh, Anjia, can you unmute Akif Altaf? Anjia, if you can hear me. Yeah, I've already unmuted. I, I guess he's uh, probably busy on the call or something like that. Okay, not a problem. Not a problem. So congrats again, Akif. Uh, who, who will be the next the, person? The next winner of the, of the wolf flag is Alan Thomas. Alan Thomas. Congrats, Alan Thomas. You are the uh, winner for the wolf flag. Can you come to the mic, please, Alan? Alan Thomas. Anjay, can you mute all the people uh, whom we are uh, selecting? Yes, I'm already doing that. Okay. Alan Thomas, can you hear us? Yeah, hello. Congrats, Alan. You are the winner. Thank you. So, so what is going to win? Is this a wolf? Uh, uh, wolf, off wolf recovery flag, which comes in two pieces, which you can mount onto your car. Perfect. Alan, happy? Yeah, good. Good. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Alan. So next. We're moving on now to the wolf. Can you mute? Control. Okay. Yeah. Next person. Now we're moving on to the wolf soft shackles. Okay, perfect. So next so is the wolf soft shackles. So who, let's see who's the lucky guy to get it. So winner number one is Jitu Thomas. Jitu Thomas, the one who used to ask a lot of questions. Jitu, are you there this time to ask questions? Can you unmute Jitu? Please come to the mic. Jitu Thomas, can you come and speak? Hi, G2. Uh, G2, can you hear us? Just unmute your... Uh... Yes, G2. Yes, go on. G2 might be a little bit shy. G2 is a shy. <laughs> you know him, by the way. <laughs> okay. Uh, G2... Go to the next one. Yeah, we'll go to the next one. So congrats, Jitu. Your name is there. You'll be emailed if you are not coming to The Voice. Um, who's the next person? Mr. Dominic Lobo. Dominic Lobo is a friend of mine also. Uh, Dominic is as actually in India. Uh, so because he got, stuck, on, yeah. he got stuck in the Corona situation. And he, hey, thank you very much. Yes. You're welcome. Dominic. So Dominic, your soft shackle will give it to Samir. He can collect it for you. So that's not a problem. So when you get back, you can call Thank you. Us. You won't you won't be lucky to get it back, Dominic, from me. <laughs> unused. I need it unused, yeah. <laughs> I mean from Samir. I I, I mean otherwise Samir will for sure give it to someone else. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Number it's fine, three, not a problem. Number yes, three who? is Mr. William Davis. Who's that? Can you repeat the name again? Mr. William Davis. Mr. William Mr. William Davis. Yes, he's here. Mr. William, can you come on mic, please? Mr. William. They're all shy. Not yeah, a no, uh, they, 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 they can receive their award later. Mr. Yes. Uh, as well. Okay, so William, can I think he's there on the mic. Let me see. William, are you there? Can you hear us? Hello. Yes, Hi, William. William. Hi, Samir. 
congratulations on the soft shackles. Congrats for winning soft shackles. Yeah, thank you. You can collect it from us uh, anytime this week and hopefully use it in the desert. And then number uh, four is Mr. Justin Lloyd. Uh, number four is Justin Lloyd. Uh, Justin Lloyd is here. Justin, can you come to the mic, please? Hi, Samir. Hi, yeah. Justin. How are you? Hi, Hi, Congrats for winning the prize. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Then yes. number five. Really surprise. Number five, Mr. Arif Lombardo again. Uh, Mr. The... Arif Bai. Arif Bai, you have won this time. Can you come to the mic? Arif Bai. Uh, Anjay, can you, we'll move can you mute? One. Yeah, we'll move on to the second one. Um, so now we're going to the uh, ARB Digital Tyrant pages. So the big surprise is uh, coming up, ARB Digital. Yeah, okay. We have two uh, winners for that. One is uh, Shimon, I believe, the Jimmy lady. Shimoni, Shimoni, are you there? You have won something. Shimoni? Shimoni, can you come? Yes, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, congrats, you have won something now. Thank you, I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you at the uh, type performance. Hopefully you can pick Definitely, it up. definitely. By the way, thank you all so much. You have cleared so many of my doubts. This was really helpful. That's what we're here for. Now, the last, uh, but not before the big prize, is uh, Rahul Nair. Rahul Nair. Wins, uh, this Rahul Nair. Come on, come on to the stage, please. Rahul, can you hear us? Hi, Raj. Thank you very much. So you much have appreciated. Won. Congrats, you have won something, yeah? So the very big, happy. The big winner of the raffle draw, and this is just pick randomly, mm. was Kiko for Lime. Oh, I Kiko. Mean, Kiko. Kiko. You won the Vision X Optimus Halo Light. Kiko, come, come to the stage, please. You are the biggest Yo, winner. Oh, thanks a lot. I <laughs> didn't expect that, bro. <laughs> All right, hello everyone. <laughs> Amazing, mashallah. Kiko has. I think I have to speak a little bit about Kiko because he's the big winner. So uh, <laughs> yes, he has this uh, highly modified and you know uh, Jeep with a lot of decorations. Uh, nobody can miss Kiko because you you see his, <laughs> you see his Jeep. You know he's Kiko. So yeah, we look forward oh, to seeing you guys this week. Oh, so you guys can collect your prices. So when you do come to touch performance ask myself or mr shibu and we'll be uh, happy to see you all thank you very much guys uh, that's it for today and we are very happy uh, to have all of you here uh, we will be uh, so uh, um, we will be uh, binding this up um, and we'll have more webinar session in the future and uh, i thank uh, the titan performance and team uh, for uh, allowing us and giving us the time. We are very happy. Uh, I, I think, uh, Anjia, could you mute other, other panelists, please? Uh, it's not muted. Thank you. Anjia, could you mute all the panelists? Okay. Um, so, Shibubai, thank you very much. And uh, Saeed, uh, thank you very much uh, for coming for this uh, webinar. Thank you, thank you very and, much, guys. Uh, having spending time with you guys hope everybody enjoyed and thank you very much we'll see you in person please sure. right, thank you peace out guys see you okay bye bye all right take care